the concept of a cantilever. Here's a stick I'm holding with both of my hands. What you're holding is called a cantilever. If I'm holding it with both hands, the stick is fixated. If, if I grab the stick with both of my hands at one end or hold it like this, it'll turn into a cantilever. It's fixed only at one end. It's a girder. It's a console. And here are my two arms. They're connected with one another. It's a console. Now, let's take two. Can you give me your stick? These two sticks are consoles. Put this one on top of it. You get a console that's connected to it. I didn't quite understand why you asked about it. This is what I thought. The arms of the guy in front make a beam, and the legs of one behind make another beam. This is the cantilever here. As for the guy who's in front, we try to make life harder for you here by offering you the wheelbarrow exercise. Some of you skip training and don't f develop physically, and when you come back again, they think they'll just do the easy part. Those exercises I've demonstrated and called warm-up are not in fact a warm-up. They help you cultivate your weak body physically. First you work with your own body weight, then you use loads, like your partner's body weight. You start practicing crawling, dragging and so on. All these elements allow you for your physical development. All the muscles in your body get some practice. Look, this is a cantilever. Don't do anything for now. It's a cantilever. It's not a stick. A stick is just a link. My arms make a cantilever. I mean my arms as related to my shoulders, spinal column and my foothold area. I mean this is how it is vertically and this is how it is horizontally. My arms make a cantilever right now. As for the stick, we can do without it. But since I'm holding it right now, we'll use it. Now I'm holding the stick in my hands. My partner puts his legs on this stick. The closer the stick to my body, the less the exertion. If I move the stick away from my body, the exertion grows. When the load gets too heavy, people can't take it anymore and lower it. Your muscles get some really good training in this exercise. Moreover, this isn't a static exercise, it's dynamic, which makes it much more difficult to perform. If it's dynamic, you must learn when to relax and when to tense up, when to shift your center of mass and keep balance with your partner. It's a complex exercise and you must work like a team. It's a pair work activity. A lot of you work individually, when one of you is pushing and the other one's running forward. Not much cooperation there. They can't understand each other. Remember, you're not working with inanimate objects, you're working with living people. You must think like your partner. The one behind thinks like the one in front and vice versa. The two people working together must show some cooperation. They must feel each other if they want to perform the exercises effectively. Only in this case can the couple function as a whole. They talk about team building, but here it's only between you and your partner. You must definitely take this element into consideration. Akedi Agzalevich, I've got a question. Let's say there's two people doing this exercise, right? What about the center of masses? Do they have a common center of mass? What about the foothold area? Yes, you've got a common center of mass because you're leaning on him and he's leaning on you. If I suddenly break you two apart, both of you will fall down on the floor. I'm adjusting my body position, taking into consideration his body position, and he's doing the same. Try crawling on all fours, but when your hands are working independently of your legs, it's impossible. The same here. I must choose the right length of the step. Keep the pressure just enough to keep him going without him falling down. I mustn't make him hurry because of the range limitations. One more thing, he mustn't wiggle his hips left and right. It gets more difficult for you to control him like that. It's like those vats they transport on trucks. They must be either empty or full. They're not allowed to transport them half empty because of the danger of unbalancing. Alternatively, there might be partitions in those vats that separate their inside in, into parts.
What they do now, as far as I know, they fill those empty spaces with some porous substance to prevent vats from wobbling. They can get filled with some sort of synthetic fibre that stops liquids from sloshing. This is especially relevant for aircraft production industry because of the high velocities, angles and the sheer amount of fuel needed for airplanes to fly. Coming back to our exercise, you, basically, apply the same technique here but at a different variety. You can increase the weight load by grabbing the stick like this, or like this. He can put his legs onto the left and right ends of the stick. Besides, you can grab the stick like this, or with a reverse grip. Different muscle groups of your body will be affected if you vary the grip. If you're out in nature or somewhere where there's no gym, you can use each other to keep your muscles well toned and keep yourself in shape. Go ahead. There's one more thing I wanted to add. Since we started talking about it, let me add my two cents. I recommend you to sing, shout or count aloud while doing the exercise. This will give your diaphragm a workout. All the muscles in your body must be involved in the exercise. Not only they, but your mental condition matters as well. First practice the exercise, then come up to the board. Grip the stick tightly. Make sure you're well balanced and not falling over. Lift the stick up and start moving forward together. You're moving together. Don't choose someone who is way heavier than you or you will get extremely difficult. Pick someone of a similar build. If you work out regularly, you can take up more weight. But for the average person, the load on your spinal column is tremendous. Something like hundreds of kilograms. Just be careful and use your common sense when you do it. This is a cantilever. Here it is. Here's the force that's acting upon it. It's a vector and it's going all the way down here. It's vertical. If you raise a cantilever up here, what happens? The force will be applied here now, but not there. The cosine of this angle will be calculated by measuring this lever arm. As for the length of it, look, it's right there. However, we need to mention its projection at this point. Where's the textbook on the drawing geometry? This angle's cosine will correspond to the lever length, not this one. If you raise the cantilever even higher, the force will move even closer to here. Look, if you move the cantilever up, what this force is going to be acting on. What about here? It equals zero. In the same way, if we move it down, the lever arm will be shorter because of the angle. Now do you understand why we keep telling you to maintain your partner's legs at your eye level? You'll get a heavier load, that's why. If you raise or lower his legs, the angle will change and the load will be reduced. What's unclear?